vertices on the side of it! Look at that! Oh my gosh! That storm is now moved into uh, Boone County right now. This That's down near the uh, Franklin Grove area. You can obviously see how the storm is rotating with the inflow coming in. So you're looking at the cloud there. That's the white part is the cloud. And then at the base, uh, sometimes you see some dust uh, coming around. Oh, that is scary. The truck is, oh my gosh. On April 4th, 2015, the Storm Prediction Center issued a severe weather outlook for April 9th, highlighting a widespread and substantial risk for severe weather spanning areas from southeastern Oklahoma to northeastern Illinois. Over the following days, they narrowed the risk to cover areas ranging from southern Missouri to northern Illinois. On April 7th, level 3 out of 5 enhanced risk was put into effect covering most of Illinois and eastern Missouri, as well as small portions of neighboring states. This risk was greatly expanded on April 8th to cover areas spanning from northeastern Texas to southern Michigan. At around noon on April 9th, a 10% risk for tornadoes rated EF2 or higher was issued for much of northern Illinois. A positively tilted shortwave trough moved through the central high plains and advanced into the western Great Lakes region. A weak area of low pressure originally centered over northeastern Kansas early on April 9th steadily moved northeast while gaining strength, reaching the border of Iowa, Wisconsin, and Illinois by late that evening. A cold front originating from the low pressure area advanced east across the Mid-South, and a warm front slowly pushed northward across eastern Iowa and northern Illinois. Surface heating ahead of the cold front allowed for mid-level convective available potential energy values, or CAPE, to reach between 1,000 and 1,500 joules per kilogram, which according to the National Weather Service is moderately unstable. An area of rich moisture that transferred northward from the Gulf of Mexico pushed dew points into the lower 60s across areas within the enhanced risk. Winds at the 850 millibar range strengthened to 45 miles per hour while winds at the 1,000 millibar range were at 70 miles per hour. This created a favorable setup for sustained supercells. At 1.30 p.m. Central Daylight Time, the SPC issued a tornado watch for northern and central Illinois, northwestern Indiana, southern Wisconsin, and portions of Lake Michigan. The areas within the watch box had a 60% risk of two or more tornadoes, as well as a 40% risk of at least one strong tornado. Isolated showers began forming across the region just before the issuance of the watch, and eventually grew into a line of strong thunderstorms, including supercells, one of which was given a severe thunderstorm warning at 6.11 p.m. 24 minutes later, at 6.35, the severe thunderstorm warning was upgraded to a tornado warning, and four more minutes later, train spotters reported a damaging tornado to the north of Ashton, Illinois. This was the beginning of the 2015 Rochelle Fairdell E of 4. The tornado touched down at 6.39 p.m., a little less than a mile northeast of Franklin Grove in Lee County. It traveled northeast while impacting the Crest Food Warehouse at EF1 intensity. The tornado entered Ogle County while still at EF1 strength, destroying two farm outbuildings. After the tornado had intensified to EF3 strength, it entered a subdivision northwest of Rochelle. Multiple houses were rated EF3 damage with max winds of 142 miles per hour and reportedly had all their walls collapsed. As the tornado crossed South Richard Road, it strengthened to high-end EF4 with winds of 200 miles per hour. It completely destroyed numerous well-built homes, wiping their foundations clean. Lawns were scoured, vehicles were tossed, and a concrete walkway was shifted a few inches. After impacting the subdivision, the tornado temporarily weakened to EF2 strength while traveling over mostly open fields. A few barns and houses were hit, with the highest estimated winds being 135 miles per hour. The tornado crossed State Route 64 while intensifying back to a high-end EF4 with winds of 200 miles per hour. Five houses were swept away, leaving just the foundation. Intense ground scouring was visible, and a car was thrown an entire mile. 200 mile per hour EF4 damage was observed once again about a half a mile to the northeast. The tornado inflicted severe damage to a large farm set and a well-constructed barn while debarking trees. It continued on, weakening to an EF2 while crossing North Moore Road. A warehouse's exterior wall collapsed with estimated winds of 115 miles per hour. 
The tornado traveled about another 7 miles inflicting EF0 to EF2 damage while a satellite tornado briefly accompanied it. The small town of Fairdale was hit shortly after the tornado entered DeKalb County. 71 homes sustained some amount of damage, while 13 were destroyed. Many houses in the northwest part of town received high-end EF3 damage, with the highest winds being 165 miles per hour. The disaster was captured on Clem Schultz's phone from the second story of his house as it was hit. He luckily survived with only a compressed broken vertebra, but his wife Geraldine and their neighbor Jacqueline Closa were unfortunately killed. The Schultz's dog, Missy, and Clem's phone with the footage were found unharmed after the disaster. The video is a prime example of the warning. If a tornado looks like it isn't moving, it's heading directly for you. Continuing northeast, the tornado hit a few houses on Wheeler Street at EF2 strength. One house had a large portion of its roof removed, another had its exterior walls collapsed, and a two-story barn was destroyed. Near the intersection of Irene Road and McNeil Road, a well-built home lost its second story and exterior walls, resulting in EF3 damage. A well-built two-story barn was destroyed, and a nearby two-story rebar reinforced cinder block silo was ripped apart. Large farm equipment was tossed a quarter to half a mile, and scouring of road pavement was observed. The tornado traveled another two miles before finally dissipating at 7.20 p.m. a little over a mile southeast of Irene. Immediately following the tornado, the Salvation Army and American Red Cross set up temporary shelters for residents in Fairdale. Over a dozen nearby fire departments helped with searching through the debris, and more than 675 volunteers and countless residents from surrounding areas assisted in cleanup efforts. Ogle County Sheriff Brian Van Vickle and DeKalb County Sheriff Roger Scott organized a lost and found for residents to retrieve missing items. Some people believe that this tornado should have been rated an EF5, and for good reason. The tornado had estimated winds based off of damage of 200 miles per hour, only one mile per hour short of EF5 intensity. The rating would have probably been fine if there were only a couple of 200 mile per hour damage indicators, but there were over 20. It's not very likely that this tornado did not have winds of over 200 miles per hour at at least one of these locations. In total, this tornado caused over $19 million in damages, or $23.5 million adjusted for inflation. Two people lost their lives, and another 11 to 22 people were injured. It had a path length of 30.3 miles, and was 700 yards wide, or just under half a mile at its maximum width. I hope you enjoyed this video, and please consider subscribing so you can learn more about weather phenomena on my channel.